What's up, Booktube? I'm Bambi. I want to talk to you about some books today. I have um, four reviews on books that I have recently read because I can't seem to get my act together as far as TBRs and wrap ups are concerned. It's too much pressure. So I'm just going to do four at a time. So today we have two physical books The New Neighbors by Simon Leelich and The Library of Souls by Richard Denny. This one I won on Goodreads. I never win anything. So it turns out you can really win stuff on Goodreads. I try and win stuff all the time and it never works out and yet somehow this year I've been able to win four physical books and I believe three ebooks. The, the other book is The Library of Souls by Richard Denny. I had seen he had a commercial going for this um, that he had made up on his channel and I was intrigued by it so I ordered it on Amazon. The two audible books that I read were The Name of the Wind, which was freaking amazing by Patrick Rothfuss, and The Black Witch by Lori Frost. So let's start with the physical books. I entered to win this on Goodreads. Um, technically though, it came from Penguin Random House, because that is the publisher, Berkeley. So I, it's an ARC, an advanced reader copy. It comes out in April. April 10th, so we got a, exactly one month before it comes out. This is the first book I've read by Simon Leelich, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a thriller. The author didn't really twist the knife in until I was fully unaware of what was going on. I love when a thriller can surprise you and you don't know what's to come. The entire thing is a lovely play on your Primal Emotion for Survival. So it follows the main character, the two main characters, uh, Londoners Jack and Sid, have found their dream home. Lots of space, great location, and a friendly owner who wants a young couple to have it. Everything ex is exactly what they hoped for when they moved in, but when Jack makes a disturbing discovery in the attic, and Sid begins to wonder about the girl next door, and they each keep each other in the dark a mistake because someone has just been killed outside their back door and now the police are watching them. This is their chance to prove their innocence or to get away with murder. It was really good. I liked it a lot. Um, it turned out to be not at all what I was expecting. It kind of lingers in your subconscious and hints at the evils of the world. A lot of his writing style is hinting at things that are happening. He doesn't. He does a really great job of not coming right out and saying exactly where he's going with things. So it's very elusive and keeps you off track, I guess. My like for this book is, of course, the twist was fantastic. Love it when you don't see it coming. That's, I feel like, the sign of very good writing. Could be that I wasn't paying attention. How did that happen? I'm not sure. Usually I tend to see things coming from a mile away, so I love it when it springs it on me, and it was really good in that sense. My dislike for this book is the initial setup of it. It's It starts off in like a diary style. I think and it does continue that way for a good, uh, the majority of the book, but you kind of get used to it after a while. It, the The beginning, maybe the first third of it, it was a little annoying, the back and forth um, diary style between the husband and the wife, but it starts to flow better and turns into a better story eventually. So I think I give it four stars on Goodreads. I try and tend to keep my five stars for things that, you know, are just on a whole nother level. So this one's really good, definitely worth the read, so it's a four, four stars. The next physical book I got, this was published this past year in 2017, I believe the author self-published the book. So it was available on Amazon and something else. It was a really quick, cute read. I hate to use the word cute because I know boys don't like the word cute, but man, the main character, Simon, I just, I wanted to pinch his cheek so bad. So I have to use the word cute. The story develops him so thoroughly that I found myself developing genuine emotions for him and his well-being. And I am excited to see what the future brings for him. I, if, if Richard, if you do another one, I would definitely buy it. 
It says, be careful what you check out. Ever since he could remember, Simon Santiago could see and talk to the dead. When his parents are killed in a train accident, he is sent to live with this estranged con man of an uncle. Soon, Simon is put on his uncle's is put on as his uncle's assistant in a ghost expelling agency and carries out the hard work for his uncle getting rid of the ghosts. Now 13 with his ability at full maximum, Simon is ready to take on bigger tasks that his uncle's booming agency getting more and more calls day by day. When a phone call comes from a desperate librarian at an infamously haunted library, Simon is all too eager to get to work. But when they arrive at the sprawling mansion of a library, Simon quickly discovers that there's something else haunting the library, and its thirst for Simon's soul is dangerously clear from the moment he steps foot into the building. It continues on, but you kind of get the gist. Um, middle grade mystery, a little bit spooky. I found it to be reminiscent of John Belair's with kind of a bit of a modern twist. So it's a little more new and up to date with a lot of spooky fun. Again, I didn't see the twist coming. I read it really quickly, but it was like, bam, oh, twist. Didn't see that coming, which is always a huge plus. Um, my like for this is, oh, I loved the library setting. It was really, it was really described well and the pictures that he included in the book really lent to the situation and the, the little spookiness. Oh, this was when they had the spirits in a jar. Um, and I think he had said he had made these pictures himself. I remember seeing a YouTube video of him going through it a while back. Ooh, this one was really good as well. How cool is that? Chapter seven, bloodbath. That's awesome. So this one, I also gave a four. I really liked, um, I really liked his characters and his idea for this book. I could definitely use some more. So if you want to make some more, I'll buy them and read them. Richard Media Geek. The, uh, oh gosh, the next book was an absolute five. I listened to The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss on Audible. I, I thought this book was epic. It, for me, it's just, the storytelling is fluid and captivating. I, I was heartbroken that the book finished. Because I wasn't reading the book, I, you can't gauge the, the number of pages or how far in you are as well when you're listening to an audible book. And I felt like this just ended abruptly. I had listened to it for like 40 hours, yet it, it ended and I wasn't ready for it to end, I guess, because really his story's not finished and you need to continue on to the next book, The Wise Man's Fear, which is where I'm currently at. And I am listening to that on audible right now. The second book in the King Killer Chronicle. For some reason, it's incredibly hard to put into words what this book is about. The main character is so thoroughly fleshed out and the world building so particular to detail that it's very easy to imagine all of this in your brain. I've got, I, and it's very believable. It's all made up, yet similar. So the main character, Quoth, is going to school to become a wizard and learn sympathy and there's all of these words that i mean it's so much made up world world building yet it's done so well that it's incredibly easy to retain and remember and understand i think that's pretty significant um in his world building is that for some reason it really sticks in your brain again another character that i have a super emotional attachment to. I'm very concerned about his well-being <laughs> and him continuing on in the future. I would be absolutely heartbroken if anything happened to him. His luck is terrible considering how hard he tries as a person. 
life just wrenching and stopping on him, yet he is not faced and continues on. It's about a young boy named Quoth who, oh gosh, see, it's too hard. I'm just going to have to read you the synopsis because this book, oh, it just confounds me for some reason, but in a good way. All right, it says, told in Quoth's own voice, this is the tale of the magically gifted young man who grows to be the most notorious wizard his world has ever seen. The intimate narrative of his childhood in a troop of traveling players, his years spent as a near-feral orphan in a crime-ridden city, his daringly brazen yet successful bid to enter a legendary school of magic, and his life as a fugitive after the murder of a king form a gripping coming-of-age story unrivaled in recent literature. A high action story written with a poet's hand, The Name of the Wind, is a masterpiece that will transport readers into the body and mind of a wizard. Like, oh, this book is just unbelievable. I, five, 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 ten, twenty, something. Oh my gosh, I am so in love with this book. I, I it's just, it's beyond belief for me. I am so just over the moon for this book. He just dazzles me with his weaving and wondering, yet every step is so deliberate that it, his impressions and the things that it happened, I feel like will be etched into my memory for life. I understand it's not for everyone. There are a couple of negative reviews, but for me, this is... I so thoroughly enjoyed this book. I feel enriched because of it. I feel lighter and yet at the same time more concrete. It invokes inspiration in me, which I need for painting and writing and even reading and working. And yet some people really didn't like it, but such is art. I'm afraid it, that's, that's how life works. For some, it's amazing. For some, they're not, they're just not wowed by it. For me, five stars. Five, five, five. Woo! All right. And lastly, um, I had listened to another Audible book, The Black Witch by Lori Frost. This came into my line of vision because of all of the craziness that was going on on booktube. So, of course, I had to see for myself what it was about. I did enjoy this novel, despite its structural and instigative flaws. I refuse to be pulled into the craziness that is all of that. If you want to check it out, there's reviews on booktube and Goodreads. It's a fictional work of art, so that's what I took it for. She uses very strong objective sentences in her writing, and that's always going to bring about very strong emotions in people. That's just how life works. So again, I took it for what I wanted it to be. It was a nice, easy read about love and magical creatures. The main character, Eleanor, is a witch. There's elves. There's demons. So the Black Witch. A new Black Witch will rise, her powers vast beyond imagining. Eleanor Gardner is the granddaughter of the last prophesied Black Witch, Carissa Gardner, who drove back the enemy forces and saved the Gardnerian people from the Realm War. But while she is the absolute spitting image of her famous grandmother, Ellerin is utterly devoid of power in a society that prizes magical ability above all else. When she is granted the opportunity to pursue her lifelong dream of becoming an apothecary, Ellerin joins her brother at the prestigious Burpax University to embrace a destiny of her own, free from the shadow of her grandmother's legacy, but soon realizes that at the university, which admits all manner of people, including the fire-wielding winged Icarals, the sworn enemies of all Gardnerians, is a treacherous place for the granddaughter of the Black Witch. As evil looms on the horizon and the pressure to live up to her heritage builds, everything Aileron thought she knew will be challenged and torn away. Her best hope of survival 
may be among the most unlikely band of misfits if she can find the courage to trust those that she's been taught to hate and fear. I mean, she has very large shoes to fill. Her grandmother was this amazing witch, and everybody kind of expects the same from her when she's been hidden away her whole life and knows, you know, not much. I liked it. No, I just kind of liked it. I don't know. I liked it. I like the witch part. I like the story. Okay, my dislike though is easy. Because it still grates on me. I can still... The author was so insistent on some things happening that you automatically knew where she was going because it was going to be the opposite of whatever she was trying to force into your head. Kind of like how on that show House... You know it's not the answer to the medical problem because it's not five minutes till the show ends. You don't get the answer until it's five minutes. So if they're giving you, you know, an answer at 30 minutes in, you can pretty much assume that's not going to be it because you're not at the 55 minute after mark. So you can assume that whatever she's saying, because she's so forcibly saying it, the opposite is actually what it's going to be. It takes a lot of the guessing out because you just have to guess the exact opposite of what's really happening so so again reading the synopsis I do if you take it just for that a story about love and magic and you know fairy stuff it's not as terrible and I liked it I thought it was good I think I gave it a four stars three stars four stars see I gave it four Yeah, I gave it four. It's fantasy. It was good. So that is four recent reads that I had. Two physical, two audible. All worth the read. So four and fives, nothing terrible, no threes. It was all good. Thanks so much for sticking around. Y'all have a good one.